So now what I'm going to do is talk briefly about some lab protocols. And then one of them is fixing cells, okay? I get this idea of fixing cells. And what you want to do if you're fixing cells, depending on what you're dealing with, this is um, if you're dealing with a sample that's on a plate, um, not in a liquid culture, you'd want to put a few drops of liquid containing the micro, or well, actually, I thought that was water, but excuse me. Anyway, this is a liquid culture, but if you were dealing with a, a plated culture, you'd want to put a drop or two of water um, on the slide before, and then you'd want to take a single colony out and make sure you just rub it into that water and make sure it looks cloudy and if it looks cloudy then you know you probably have something on the slide but anyway this is dealing with the liquid um, culture so if I have a liquid culture I need a few drops of liquid containing the microbe on and I want to place it on a glass slide I'll use an, a loop or maybe I'll, I'll use a dropper but in most cases I'll use a loop and um, once you let it dry in a slide warmer or in the air or whatever to choose your choose whichever you'd like um, one is much faster of course and once it's dry what you want to do is you just want to run it over the flame a couple of times you just want to pass it through the flame two or three times make sure it's heat fixed and that's what's known as heat fixing and what it does is it basically makes sure that the cells are locked onto the slide and if they're locked on the slide you'll be able to stain them and if you're able to stain them without them being washed off and that's the whole point of heat fixing so then you get to this idea of differential staining, okay? So the most important differential stain, and the only one I'm going to talk about for our purposes here, is gram staining, okay? So the gram staining procedure, you can look it up if you wish. Um, it's a common lab practice. And the gram stain is used to separate most disease-causing bacteria into two categories. It's also used to separate all bacteria into two categories. Um, of course, some cases they don't stain well. There's something called acid fast stain that's used on a certain type of um, that's used on certain type of bacteria that has a waxy coat, um, like tuberculosis. I believe is it falls into that um, category. Anyway, the bottom line is that there's these two forms. There's you could separate them into what's known as gram positive or gram negative bacteria, and it's a staining protocol. So if I have a gram positive strain, I have a purple color. I'm going to see um, after I go through the procedure and look at my slide, or if I'm gram negative, I'm going to see pink. All right. So I have these bacterial shapes as well. All right, and I just want to briefly talk about this. There's what's known as cocci. They're spherical cells, and they can be found in single cells, chains, or quartets. So they can be found in different ways. Bacilli are rod-shaped bacteria. They can be found alone or in chains. Uh, Verberos is bent rods, okay? Then there's these spiral and irregular-shaped bacteria as well. So I just wanted to kind of make mention of those are the type that you might see on a microscope slide.